This video begins our discussion on solving quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? Well, a quadratic equation is an equation that is of a particular form. So a quadratic equation is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, not every quadratic equation is going to look like this. It's not always going to be in that form. Sometimes we have to put it in that form. Um, but yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of these guys. Like this concept, what we're going to be seeing in these next several videos and sections, it's never going to go away. As long as you stay in math, you will always be encountering this. So let's talk about how do we solve a quadratic equation. The first thing that we see for solving a quadratic equation is something called the zero factor theorem. All right. So the zero factor theorem, and a lot of times you'll see me abbreviate this as ZFT, says the following. It says if you have a product A times B that equals zero, if you have that, here's your conclusion. Then A is equal to zero, B equals zero, or both factors are zero. That's what it says. It, and this is the only time you have a guarantee. If you've got a product that is equal to zero, one of those factors has to be zero. Now, again, this only works when you have a, a product that equals zero. If you have a product that equals two, there's no guarantee about what either of those numbers are. You, you don't know. You can't tell me that you know for certain that if you multiply to get two, that you know what one of those numbers are, okay? Because you may have something in your head, but what if I say, oh yeah, how about 10 times one-fifth? That product gives you two, but I bet you weren't thinking of that, right? Unless you're watching this video a second time, which in that case, thanks for the view. But the only time we have a guarantee is when the product is equal to zero. If you multiply to get zero, somebody has to be zero, okay? And this is the concept that's gonna carry us through for most of the semester, right? In terms of solving equations, you're gonna see this over and over and over again. All right, for example, let's do this. If I take the equation x squared plus seven x minus 18 is equal to zero. The zero factor theorem is gonna help us out here. Now, the words tell you exactly what you need to do, zero. That means you need to have everything on one side of the equation so that you can get zero on the other side. Factor. Take your polynomial and factor it. Factor completely. You should know how to factor. If you don't, go back and watch the review video about factoring polynomials. There should be two that you can watch. And then applying the theorem. That's the last word, which is to say once you have a product that equals zero, set each of those guys equal to zero to find the potential solutions. So right now we can see that this is already equal to zero. And now we need a factor. All right, so we need to find factors of 18 that subtract to seven. All right, so that's gonna be nine and two. And knowing how to work with the signs, the factors of 18 that have to subtract to seven being nine and two, you need to have a positive seven at the, at the end that means the larger of those two factors has to be positive, and you need to have a negative two so that when you multiply these guys, you get negative 18. So this is the factor part. The last part of the zero factor theorem says that if you have a product that equals zero, that means that x plus nine is equal to zero, or the other factor, x minus two, is equal to zero. This is the application of that theorem. You set each factor equal to zero, and then you solve these smaller linear equations. We know how to solve linear equations. So you take something that's quadratic, a little bit more complicated, and you break it down into two smaller linear equations. So this guy, when you solve it, you get x equals negative 9. And over here, 
x equals positive 2. Now what I'm not showing here is that I'm not showing how I move terms from one side to the other. Uh, if you need to say like minus 9 and minus 9 on both sides, go for it. Uh, but here these guys are fairly small and simple so you don't have to show that work unless you really need to if it gives you a you know, certain sense of peace and comfort, which I totally understand. All right, let's try another one. I, I guess before we go on to this next one, I do want to make sure we understand. Um, if you plug in negative 9 for all of these x's up here, it's going to make it a true statement. If you plug in 2 into all of these x's, it's also going to equal 0, making that a true statement. So you have two different solutions that can work here. All right, let's try this next one. So we have 5x plus 2 times 8x minus 1 times x plus 146 is equal to 0. So let's make sure we go through and we understand the process for the zero factor theorem. The words tell you exactly what to do. This needs to be equal to 0, which it is. It needs to be factored completely, and it is. When you've got the parentheses right next to each other, this is indicating a product, so this guy is factored. If you try to take this and you expand it all out and you multiply it, that's where you come into big, big problems. Okay? I've already done the work for you. It's equal to zero and it's factored. You're welcome. Now we apply the theorem. The theorem says that you would set each factor equal to zero. So 5x plus 2 equals zero, or 8x minus 1 could be the factor that equals 0, or x plus 146 is the factor that equals 0. So you've got these three different factors. Each one's going to give you a different solution for the original problem. So just one at a time, you're going to work these guys out. So here, and again, you might be able to do all of this in one step. If you need to take separate steps, that's fine. If you feel more comfortable saying, all right, I got to subtract two on both sides. So 5x equals negative two, and then divide both sides by five. If this is what's going to work for you, then so be it. I have no problem with that. So x equals negative two over five. And you can also um, do a little shortcut here. Talk to me about the steps that you would take to get x by itself. Well, the first thing you would do is that you would add 1 to both sides, and then you would divide by the coefficient to get x by itself. So there you go, x equals 1 over 8. And if you did the same steps that I did over here by adding 1 and then dividing by 5, you're going to get the same answer. Just like over here, how do you get x by itself? Well, to get x by itself, you have to subtract. 146. So these are the three solutions to this equation. Now when you're working something like this in my math lab, what they're going to ask you to do is they're going to ask you to kind of fill in the blank here. They're going to say, all right, x equals, and they give you a box, and they have like these curly brackets here. And the curly brackets are that set notation where you're just going to list your solution sets, uh, your solution set, but you have to use commas to separate your answers. So you would say, well, my answers are negative 2 over 5, comma, 1 over 8, comma, and then negative 146. The thing you have to be careful about when you're using my math lab is that when you type a comma, you've got to make sure that your cursor is not in the denominator, because if it is, my math was going to count that answer wrong. So always be careful about your cursor placement and where you're putting your negatives and your fractions and your commas. And as long as you do that, you're going to be fine. Now, in the next video, we're going to see things get a little bit more complicated with some of the examples. But we can do this. We just have to know how to factor.